Hi everyone, it's Marianne. Welcome to my Wasteless Life. In this video, I'll be sharing with you some of my plants that are currently struggling and trying to unalive themselves. Thank you so much for joining me today. And if you're new, this is my Wasteless Life, where I take you along my plant and sustainable lifestyle journey and share with you some of my tips and tricks along the way. So today I'm sharing with you my plants that are currently struggling and trying to unalive themselves lately. And in the past, I used to stress out a lot when a plant is struggling. And even though when I get requests for it, I don't really share my L's when it comes to my house plants because I thought that for people to take me seriously or believe what I have to say about house plants, I need to have a perfect record when it comes to taking care of my house plants. When you think about it, it's not very honest and it's not very realistic because it is a plant journey. There's going to be ups and downs. Nowadays, I'm a little bit more chill about it. I mean, it still affects me. I still stress out a little bit, but I'll process it quickly and let it go. Because as I always say, or well, I don't always say it, but I do say it, it's about seeking growth and not perfection when it comes to our house plants and something that we could also follow in life. So today I am having a dedicated video on my plants that are currently struggling and trying to unalive themselves. And the very first one is my Rapidophora tetrasperma. And if you've seen my video, my best trailing and climbing house plants, this was one of them because it has a really nice growth. But what happened was the other day it fell off its plant stand and I was able to capture it on film, but my camera was on the wrong setting. So hopefully editing Marianne has a figured a way to salvage that footage because it's hilarious in hindsight. Because while I was trying to take care of this one, my Syngonium elbow and my string of turtles fell off the same plant stand. And luckily for my Syngonium elbow and for my string of turtles, nothing bad happened to them. They just needed to be repotted so they are not in this video but at that moment i was really upset but i got over it in 30 seconds and realized that it's actually a blessing in disguise because i was having a hard time trying to find a place for this because it's already been growing too long but now that it's smaller again i could shove it into any plant shelf or any surface and it would do fine and for the cuttings of this one i currently have it propagating in water in the past i don't have a lot of luck with propagating raphidophora tetrasperma so we'll see what happens with this one but i could already see a couple of them forming roots so that's great news so even if just half of this survives propagation i'm happy with it because i don't really need a lot of raphidophora tetrasperma and i actually don't know what i'm going to do with this if it does successfully propagate but we'll find out and i'll keep you updated in a future video update i posted about it in a local facebook plant group that i'm in and someone came to pick them up for me also update on the mother plant as you can see it has three new growth points which i'm really excited about not sure though if all three will survive we will see and i'll definitely keep you posted for the, for the next plant, it does kind of suck because it is one of my favorite house plants and I kind of suspected that it was struggling for a while but I hope it would bounce back on its own but it didn't and it's my Synapsis Pictus Exotica and if you've been watching me for a while you know I do have a couple of Synapsis Pictus Exotica but since I was trying to minimize my plant collection but at the same time I was hesitant to give up either one I decided to combine them in one pot together and they didn't like that so it started experiencing root rot so I had to take it out of the pot and you know remove all the roots that were rotting and I also decided to cut off the long vines that it already had because I didn't want the mother plant which is this one to overwork itself by trying to support all the vines and also try to regrow roots and at the same time if i do make propagations of this so just in case this one doesn't make it i have cuttings and i won't lose the entire plant altogether but if you want to see this plant in its former glory go watch my videos and that's this varieties and how to tell them apart but i think this video comes out first before that one but if you're watching in the future go check down the description the link should be there but like the tetrasperma, it did turn out to be a blessing in disguise in the end because now it does actually take up a lot less space. So right now the cuttings are propagating in water, but recently Hobby Store sent me their Pathcal, which is an eco-friendly soilless medium. And I have used it before when they sent me their Midori Grow Frame earlier this year. It has the same growing material and my pothos cuttings that I placed in there really loved it. So I'm excited to use it for this one and I'm going to demonstrate 
to you right now how I'm going to propagate this and grow this in Pascal. Here's what the Pascal looks like. It is already divided into three parts for you so you don't have to break it apart yourself. It looks like a bit of a nesting doll. And what you do with it is you soak it in water so that it would fully expand. I soak mine with the Root & Grow solution. That's why the water looks a little bit murky. But you can just soak yours in regular water. It does take a few minutes for it to be fully soaked and expand. But after it does, just take it out of the water and into a container of your choice. I'm placing mine in a glass container with like at the bottom to act as drainage. And after that, you could just stick in the cuttings into the divided parts. Like I said, you don't have to break it apart or anything. Just stick the cuttings in between the divided parts and you're good to go. And I'm going to show you the top view of it so you can see how it looks like from the top. And here's the top view. As you can see, what I'm doing is I'm just opening up the gaps in between the divided parts of the Pascal and sticking in the cuttings in there. What I like about the Pathcal compared to other soil-free mediums that I've tried in the past is with Pathcal, it's virtually impossible to make any mess with it because of how it's constructed. And second, I don't really need to maintain a water reservoir for it, even though I put Leka at the bottom. It's just for drainage, and I also don't have to second guess if it's watering or not. The Pathcal would, of course, shrink and also lighten in color if it's dry, and all I have to do is pour some water on top for it to be re-moist. And at the end of the video, I'll show you an update on how it is doing a week or two later. But if you're interested in purchasing Pathcal from the hobby store, the link is down in the description. Go check it out. Meanwhile, let's return to my other struggling plants. And by the time this video is up, either this plant has made it or it's already dead. And this is also kind of embarrassing because I did a care video for this plant earlier this year and now it is dying under my care. And that plant is the Tradescantia nanook. So this is basically what I have left of it. I used to have a very full four inch pot and a propagation in this pot. What I did was I combined the two together when the propagation was already growing too large for this small terracotta pot. But after I did that, the plant just started dying. It didn't recover from the repotting. And I think I might have overwatered it too at one point and the stems just started getting mushy and the leaves are just starting to fall off. When I remove it from the pot, there was root rot. And after I repotted it again and salvaged what I could, a lot of the stems and leaves still started falling off. And this is what I am left with. So I'm back with this one. So I'm not sure if this will survive. I hope it does. I do love the plant Tradescantia nanook. It's what got me into Tradescantias. But if this one doesn't survive, I don't know if I'm going to repurchase this. It's just that I think the plant that I bought initially was expensive for the size that I got. And if I can find one that's under $5, then I would repurchase it. But right now, I'm not in a hurry to do so. And my next struggling plant is my Monstera saltipicana. This one, I am not surprised because we've always had this problem from day one. I always struggled with this plant with yellowing and root rot, but right now I'm only down to this one. If you watch my Papa Scare video, in my background, I have a full eight inch pot of Monstera Siltipicana that I found at Lowe's for under $20. And it's still very expensive in many places, even though it can be occasionally found at Lowe's. But for me though, I only found it one time at Lowe's for under $20. But I never really wanted a huge Monstera Siltipicana kind of plant so I started selling off parts of it and I've sold so many propagations of that plant that I can't really be mad that it keeps struggling. It has paid for itself and paid for my other plants as well. So when this plant was yellowing like crazy, I told myself that when it bounced back, which is on its way, and I knew it will because, you know, it's not our first rodeo. We've been through this before. I said that once it bounced back, I will sell this but I am now, I'm not too sure if I would because I might regret selling it. Because like I said, it's still hard to find the Monsteros of the Picana again at Lowe's. It's still very expensive in many other places and I doubt that I'll find this at Lowe's again for under $20. But as mentioned, I have a very toxic relationship with my Monstera Siltipicana. It's currently patient zero for my fungus gnat infestation. As you can see how much fungus gnat 
this one captured i had to take it out of my ikea cabinet because it has infected pretty much every single plant that i have in there including the next one that i'm going to talk about which is my anthurium clarinervium and this one was infected with the fungus nets as well because it was in the ikea cabinet with my monstera saltipicana and i think it also had soil mites because the plant wasn't pushing out any new growth all of these leaves are in new growth i did cut off all the original leaves it came with but it hasn't pushed a fourth leaf since and i think the soil mites were competing for nutrients in the soil so i had to repot it and i also think the pot that it was in which was this one was too big for it so when i repotted this there was a tiny bit of root rot but mostly there were holes in the roots of the anthurium and if you've seen the roots of an anthurium they have very thick roots like of an orchid and there were holes in it like insect bites so i think that was the doing of the soil mites and now i have repotted it in my sphagma moss coco coir vermiculite mix and i put in a clear container so i could monitor the root growth and so far it's looking good and it's in a much smaller container now so hopefully it's going to start to push out a new growth and i think i do see a point of new growth on it but i'm not sure if it's a new root or a new leaf so we will see in time and i'll share with you updates on this one too in a future video and the last two that i'm going to mention in this video is probably the most painful because I just recently got them and one of them is already dead and one of them might be unaliving itself too and both of them are Hoyas and the first one is the Hoya Kentiana variegata. that one is gone that one is dead so when I brought it back from Chicago to Maryland I took it off the soil thinking that would be the best way to travel with it but I forgot that Hoyas are very sensitive to repotting and so when i brought it back it just started falling off leaves until it has none and now what's left of it is just the roots and a little bit of stem i have it propagating in my prop station over there but i'm not really sure what's going to come of it i highly doubt it would produce new leaves it might eventually rot but so far it's hanging in there so i'm still keeping it in there but the hoya kentiana variegata is my biggest l as far as how fast a plant died in my care after i just got it that plant didn't even last me a week and now it's dead and the next one is the hoya compacta variegata again at first glance it seems like there's nothing wrong with it but if you compare it to a footage or picture of it just two weeks ago this was a much bigger plant it had a vine here that i had to cut off because the leaves were continuously getting mushy and dropping so i just decided to cut off the vine altogether and the yellowing has stopped so i thought it has recovered from the shock transplant because i also repotted this without letting it acclimate first again that was rookie mistake but i thought it has started to recover but now i could see wrinkling leaves on this vine and usually like for my regular hoya compacta when the leaves are wrinkly that means it needs watering so i watered it but the leaves are still wrinkly and i don't want to water it again because i've been watering this so often more often than i would a regular hoya and i just don't want to do it anymore because i'm scared of overwatering it i don't really know what's going on i don't know why that one is still trying to dry out i think the other vine is doing okay i do see a new growth but the thing with the hoya compacta variegata like most hoyas it is a very slow grower so if this survives it will take a long time for the vines to regrow so i don't really know what to do with it if you have a hoya compacta variegata or if you're an expert on hoya let me know down in the comments how to best take care of this one because right now i'm at a loss and this was my most expensive plant purchase this year aside for my anthurium clarinervium i paid 35 dollars for this one so at this point even though it's going to be a while before it regrows all the leaves and vines that it lost i'm just hoping it survives at this point that's all i'm asking for and i think this one is pushing out new growth so i hope at least one of the vines survives but i'm really hoping for this one to survive as well so if you have any tips and tricks for me on taking care of a hoya compacta variegata especially for the hoya heads 
and Hoya experts out there, please let me know down in the comments because I could really use your help in trying to keep this one alive. Hi everyone, it's Wednesday, August 11th, and I'm gonna share with you the update to the Synapsis Pectus cuttings that I put in Pathgal. And so far they've been doing well. I think they've been here for almost two weeks now, if not longer. I did lose one cutting, it rotted out, but so far everything else is looking good. I've seen a couple of root growth up here already so that is a good sign that this one is successfully propagating and because I placed it in my IKEA greenhouse cabinet I haven't really been watering this I've just been moistening up a little bit every now and then when I think it's about to go dry but it hasn't really gone that dry and as you can see like down in the leka there's a little bit of water in there so it's doing pretty good and I'm really excited for this to grow fully because like I said I miss this plant trailing really really long so that's the update on my Synapsis Pectus Exotica. And again, if you're interested in purchasing the Pathgal from Hobby Store, the link is down in the description. Those are my plants that are currently struggling in my care. Let me know down in the comments which of your plants are struggling as well. And if you have any tips and tricks for me for my plants that are currently struggling, especially for my Hoya Compacta Variegata, let me know down in the comments as well. I could really use your help. But thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't yet, go check out these videos up here until my next one. But until then, I see you. I appreciate you. Take care of yourself and each other. And have a plentiful day. Bye.